Thank you for the opportunity to present our results. Um, the Harrow GCC team generates and performs analysis of low-pass whole genome sequencing data for different uh, TCJ tumors. And in our case, low-pass means uh, 7x coverage uh, on average. One aspect of our analysis is the search for viruses and bacteria in tumors and looking for possible integration events and mechanisms of such integrations. And today I'm going to present our results for head and neck carcinomas and bladder cancers. So why we search for viruses? Actually, it's a well-known fact that viral infection is one of the important risk factors for different cancer types. A significant proportion of uh, head and neck carcinomas are caused by human papilloma virus. As for the bladder cancer, uh, results are somehow controversial, but several previous studies reported a moderate association between the bladder cancer and HPV and some polyoma viruses. So what did we uh, find in our TCJ datasets? So we performed analysis of whole genome sequencing data for 113 head and neck tumors, uh, tumor and control pairs and 105 bladder cancer and control pairs. Uh, generally, we could divide detected viruses into three groups. Uh, different uh, types of uh, HPV viruses, human herpes viruses, and uh, one case of polyoma virus positive bladder tumor. Eight per, uh, HPV infected 8% of head and neck tumors and 4% of bladder cancers. And most cases are represented by so called high risk types of HPV, uh, such as type 16, 33, and 56. And we do not see these viruses in the control pairs, except for one case, but this positive control case has also a positive tumor pair. And probably this uh, tumor contamination event, uh, like it was discussed uh, yes on yesterday's talks. So let's look more closely to uh, HPV positive samples. As you can see, the entire, in most cases, the entire viral genome presents in the infected cells. And the estimated number of HPV copies per cell varies from 1 to 30. However, sometimes we see only 80 or even less percent of viral genome in the cell. Uh, such situations observed in only two positive control uh, samples and a couple of positive tumors. And uh, we think that uh, it happens not only because of a low number of copies per cell in these cases, but in some cases it happens due to large deletions in the viral genome. So here is a visualization of uh, sequencing data for some of HPV positive tumors. And for those who are not familiar with IGV browser, uh, each uh, gray rectangle represents a sequencing read mapped to a reference viral genome. And I want to mention that uh, it's a linear representation of HPV genome, which actually is a circular genome. So uh, you can see here that genome coverage varies not only across the different samples, but also within the same sample. Some regions are amplified, whereas some other regions are completely lost, like I mentioned before. So, okay, we detected uh, virus-positive tumors. But the critical issue, at least in the case of HPV, is the physical status of viral DNA in the infected cells. Normally, it presents there in, as an episode. However, uh, when it uh, integrates into a human genome, bad things begin to happen. Int typically, integration leads to a disruption of the viral E2 gene, which normally represses uh, viral oncogenes E6 and E7. And as a result, E6 and E7 start to overexpress, and their products downregulate human tumor suppressors P53 and PRB. So that's why, and this leads to malignant progression. So that's why it's interesting to detect integration sites. 
So in order to detect integration events, we look for clusters of discordant read pairs. We take advantage of pair and sequencing. And uh, what's the discordant read pairs clusters? Where one end of a pair mapped to a viral genome and the other end mapped to a human genome. So here are uh, some detailed examples of detected integration events. Uh, besides HPV, we found two integration events for poliomavirus positive bladder tumor. And in one case, uh, poliomavirus integrates in the fidgetin, uh, gene which uh, involved in mitosis regulation. In the case of herpes virus 6, uh, integration happens in the telomeric regions. As for HPV integration, I want to bring to your attention the fact that many targeted human genes are actually members of uh, different uh, cancer pathways. You can easily recognize some very familiar genes like NOTCH1, TP63, RED51B involved in DNA reparation, or BCL2L1, which could act as a, uh, either pro or anti-apoptotic regulator. So such results uh, support the idea that uh, integration events uh, probably might contribute to cancer genesis not only through a viral oncogene expression, but also from modification of host tumor suppressors and oncogenes. So to sum up, we detected uh, uh, integration events in 70 HPV or poliomavirus positive tumors, and two-thirds of them uh, have at least one integration event involved cancer-related genes. However, we also noticed another interesting fact, that almost half of all integration events are accompanied by somatic copy number changes. For example, in uh, one bl uh, bladder tumor, HPV insertion replaces a large part of uh, NOTCH1 gene, uh, leading to a heterozygous loss of uh, this region. However, I think that the most fascinating cases are those where we see amplification of both viral and human regions. Uh, and in at least four tumors, we think that they see that uh, such amplification happens after the formation of circular or chimeric viral human episodes. And in the next couple of slides, I will show you one example of such episode. So in this tumor, HPV integrates in the gene TPR, uh, TRPC4AP involved in uh, cell cycle control. Here is a visualization of uh, HPV sequencing. And uh, I want to remind you that these ends uh, are joined to each other. And here are integration breakpoints. And these regions of viral genome are involved in the integration. And you see that uh, they are amplified, 60x comparing with 30x. So let's look on the human side. This 9KB region of TRPC involved in uh, integration. And again, we see amplification of this region. 40x comparing with 10x. Uh, chimeric reads, uh, detected chimeric reads, suggest that uh, HPV sequence encompasses this human region from both sides. One possible explanation that we see some very, very complex standard duplication, something like seven duplications in a row. But the simplest and the most probable explanation is that we see the actual circular chimeric fragment, something like episome. So we suggest the following model of integration event. This region of viral DNA integrates into TRPC4 gene, and it, uh, this uh, chimeric fragment undergoes uh, excision and circularization. But in such case, uh, one might expect to see traces uh, of a deletion on the place of the excised chimeric fragment. And actually, we do not see such a deletion. Is it possible? And the answer is yes. We think that in the case of a chimeric viral episome, 
we see the same mechanism which is responsible for formation of double minute extra chromosomes observed in different uh, cancer types. So there are some uh, probable models of this mechanism. One model is the segregation-based model. And here, excision and circularization happen after uh, the replication. And after mitosis, one daughter cell gets a deleted copy of uh, gene, and another daughter cell gets uh, two intact copies plus episome. And maybe such combination uh, confers uh, selective advantage to cells. So at the end of the day, we see only descendants of this cell uh, with amplified uh, episomes because episome has viral origin of replication. Another possible model is a re-replication based model. And here uh, uh, happen re-reparation of a deleted region and re-replication. And uh, after mitosis, both daughter cells get uh, in, uh, two intact copies of gene, but only one gets uh, episome. And again, due to um, possible selective uh, advantage, at the end we see only the, the descendants of this daughter cell with amplified episomes. And that's why we see uh, many copies of episomes, chimeric episomes, and we do not see any uh, trace of uh, the chromosome scar. So uh, as conclusions, even low pass whole genome sequencing data together with our pipeline uh, allow effectively detect not only the viral presence in the cells, but in the samples, but also integration events and mechanisms of such integrations. We detected uh, uh, integrations in 70% of uh, virus positive tumors. And we think that uh, integration events influence of uh, malignant progression through both human genes and viral genes. And uh, finally, uh, almost in a quarter of all HPV integration events, uh, we think that we see formation of chimeric uh, human viral episome. And that might have some connections with uh, some uh, clinical uh, outcomes, for example, it could be a cause of different uh, treatment responses, but uh, that requires further investigation. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody in the Ohara GCC team, and especially Raju, Angela, and John Seidman. And thank you for your attention. So I'll ask the first question, which is, uh, do these events, first of all, is the virus doing this in 100% of the malignant cells? Do we know in some clonal way that this is in all the cells in the population? And, and then another question would be, um, if this can pop in and out of the genome, does it do that just on once in a given cancer, or do you see multiple events of sort of going in, picking up genes, and coming out as an episode? Um. Uh, for a uh, second question, I think that we see uh, two such events in one tr uh, tumor sample. Yes. Uh, as for the first question, in some cases uh, all clones uh, have this event, but in some cases I think not. So in those cases, would, this, would that be against the hypothesis that this virus was picking up a driver oncogene? Probably yes. Probably is. But. Hi, I was just wondering why you think you have episomes as opposed to tandem duplications of these integrations. Well, uh, because it's uh, relatively hard to imagine that uh, we uh, that cell undergoes just, for example, exact same uh, seven the same tandem duplications. Why? I mean that. What's the purpose of this for a cell? Uh, the formation of episome, like the formation of a double minute extra chromosomes, uh, is more simple explanation, and it's more likely explanation. It's more likely event in terms of probability. So uh, 
part of the reason I ask is I, I have some data that's not published, but shows that we can, like in the, in one of the projects I work on, that we have tandem integrations of bacterial genomes, so six tandem integrations in a, a fly, and we're pretty sure they're not episomes. And so I think there's this notion that these tandem duplications, large tandem duplications, don't occur and aren't stable. And so I just would put forward um, that as maybe a, a addition, another explanation, because it, the episome um, argument looks is very compelling until you start having to invoke all these different mechanisms to get rid of the chromosomal scar. Well, yeah, uh, actually, it's a pr uh, just a probable uh, model. I mean, that the ultimate uh, answer on this question would be fish analysis. Will we see it or not? Yes. But uh, yes. yeah. thanks.